Today's Grandmaster is Klaus Victor Darga of Germany, celebrating his 86th birthday today. He was born in 1934 on this day. We have a picture of him in his prime over my right shoulder here. Let me scoot to the side so you can see it a little better. And um, we're going to Winnipeg, Canada in 1967, October 1967 to be precise, a tournament that Darga won. We're going to show a couple of his games from there, first of which from Daniel Janowski on October 5th, 1967. I was but three years of age when this game was played. And as you can see, Darga is no longer starting with knight f3, followed by c4. Now he's going directly to c4. Knight f6 is the Anglo-Indian defense. Queen's knight variation, g6, e4, d6, d4. And with bishop to g7, we have transposed to the normal variation of the king's Indian defense. Now, f3 is the move that was played by Friedrich Samish, and uh, it bears his name, Samish Variation. That's S A umlaut M. E-S-A-C-H, Samish, or Samish. I can put his spelling here. Friedrich Samish, control C, paste, Samish. I'll put it in both chat rooms. We are also being ca carried by uh, chess.com TV today. We're glad that audience is with us as well. Friedrich Samisch, he was a um, German grandmaster. So that's his move. F3, normal defense with castling. Bishop E3, B6 is the double fianchetto. Yeah, I, I know he's behind me. He's checking, he's checking all my work to make sure. Double Fianchetto variation here. And you'll find this opening in volume E as an echo, section 82 of your Encyclopedia of Chess openings. Knight G to E2, C5, castle king side, bishop B7, and... Um, Actually, a6 is the most popular move here. Sometimes c takes d4 is played here. But bishop b7. By Janowski. Queen to d2. And again, a6 is the more common move from this position. Rook e8 is unique to this game. And no other game in the database has this position. So we're now in uncharted waters. <clears throat> Rook A to D1 is played. And now Queen to C8. And B3 is played. Now C takes D4 and Knight takes D4. Knight c5, that's no good, that bishop's no good, so he's probably not interested in taking it. He's boxed in by his own pawns, he wouldn't give up a good knight. You have a good knight, and you got a crummy bishop. Don't give up your good knight for his crummy bishop. Nonetheless, he retreated his crummy bishop to b1. Knight e6. So he 
you could just withdraw or you could also just leave it there I mean he played King h1 interesting just a stall move it seems I there's nothing that's ever going to attack on this diagonal so I'm not sure why King h1 he does not trade Knights instead Knight h5 wanting to get another attacker here what I mean you're triple def okay so takes 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 no you got ample defense what's Knight h5 about Well, maybe he does just want to trade off both miners for both miners. I don't know. Uh, Knight D to E2 says no thank you to that. Knight F6. Rook E1. Rook F to E1 to be exact. Bishop C6. And we've seen this kind of um, maneuvering in... Darga's games before a lot of dancing around a lot of gradual build-up okay the B pawn is undefended and under attack Bishop c2 defends a5 Knight back to d4 now Queen b7 Knight to d5 Knight F to D7. Amply defended. Bishop H6. Knight E6. Ooh. Knight F5. Juicy. Juicy, juicy. Juicy, 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 Lucy. He played bishop f8. I know you're wondering, why can't the pawn just take? If you take with the pawn, after pawn takes pawn, where's the knight go? Let's say the knight comes back to, well, he has to probably come back either to c7 or d8. Let's say c7 for now. But now the problem is, how are you going to deal with this? So for that reason, the knight cannot be taken. So bishop to f8. Bishop takes bishop. Knight d takes bishop. Knight h6, Czechosaurus rex. King g7. Now knight back to g4. f6, queen h6 check. King f7. Now we bust this all up. Let's see what he does. f4. Some way of breaking in here f5 here no he retreated his queen what about f5 what about f5 that might have been a move he retreated his queen instead perhaps he's going to sack a knight for a pawn here because he's got this triple attack well, black defends. And now e5. e5 instead of f5. I thought that was a sure possibility. Bishop takes uh, the knight on d5. Rook takes the bishop. 
Pawn takes the pawn on e5 now. Pawn takes the pawn. One attacker, two attackers, three attackers. Three defenders, but there's really going to be chances to get these rooks over for a bigger attack. He played king g7. He may be very willing to sacrifice a rook for a knight and a pawn to rip this open. Rook A to D8. Ooh. Rook A to D8. That's going to grant him the right to do that if that was his plan. You got all these attackers here. He did it. He captured. And as you can see now, you've got all this attack going on here h6 the queen's cutting everything off actually the knight defends this so you can't play queen takes pawn queen c6 you can play queen f7 check he does forcing the king to h8 Knight h6, knight g6, bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes, checkmate in one. Queen takes e6, so no longer checkmate, but you're losing your queen. Okay, not with the rook, not how you think, because there's a back rank weakness here. So you can't take the queen with the rook. Because if you do, you're the one checkmated. But the only legal move to get out of check here after knight takes knight to f7, the only legal move is queen takes f7. And so now it's a queen and a rook. And so he resigned after knight f7 check black resigned <clears throat> black resigned a couple of really nice juicy moves in this one um, very exciting chess game this uh, the first one was knight to f5 was the first juicy tidbit in the second one was rook takes knight which really ripped things open really nicely done and he resigned here very nicely played now the numbers on this game white accuracy 98.86 Black accuracy, 87.45. White, best move ratio, 67.5%. Black's best move ratio, 41%. And again, we see another example where you have a grandmaster playing 87.45 and 41%. Now, the real difference is you might get plus 90, plus 50. And a Grandmaster might from time to time get minus 90, minus 50. But as frequently or as infrequently as you get plus 90, plus 50, that's how infrequently Grandmasters are getting minus 90, minus 50. <laughs> But if you were to score these scores all, all the time, every single game, you'd be a grandmaster too. <laughs>